Hello, this is Mary Hardy. Uh, interestingly enough, after I finished my PowerPoint, Steve, my technician, my friend, we, we sat down and did the Holy Grail Vortex and asked for crop circles. This was the first crop circle that appeared around Stonehenge on the 28th of May. You see what it is? All of Tesla's technology was run through the center of the Earth's motor. As you see here, we have a pendulum, a heart pendulum, coming down from the Earth's motor and creating the wings of Isis, giving us the consciousness of the Earth motor. Now, last year you had Brian Busco who talked about pillars of light. Any time that you connect a pyramid through the Earth motor, you get a pillar of light all the way from the ionosphere to the earth motor. And that pillar of light can run the whole grid system of the planet. There are thousands and thousands of pyramids on the planet. So at one time, the technology of the ancients was to heat their homes was run through that technology. Now, the second crop circle that appeared was this wonderful coronavirus, and it is stuck to the white blood cell. So we could put this coronavirus in a pillar of light and spin it with any prayer that you wanted to and ask the white blood cells to devour it. This is a technology that was created by the elders of the planet through the pyramid system, through the crop circles, and through the whole grid. In 1968, my family lost four hours of time. We met with the elders of the planet and were asked to build a pyramid for my then three-year-old son to build it before he was 10 years old. John is the one that's standing next to my husband, Dean, and Mark is holding on to the dog. Now, we built a pyramid. We put an orgone covering on that pyramid and putting an orgone covering on the pyramid connected the pyramid to all the other pyramids, shut down the Bermuda Triangle and the Great Lakes Triangle, and allowed us to make a pillar of light all over the world. Pyramids generate these vortexes. Pyramids is an orgone generator. The Earth is an orgone generator. Interestingly enough, unfortunately, the government outlawed orgone energy with Wilhelm Reich in the late 40s. So that tells you something about what this technology can give us. The first thing happened to us, we had several people from Sawyer Air Force Base, Navy Intelligence, come to our house because the Navy was broadcasting through this worldwide radio station. That was to keep the submarines submerged right around the 70s. Cold War, they didn't want nuclear bombs to be exploded so they put them in warheads and ran them around so the submarines wouldn't surface. And that was called seafare. The whole Earth is an orgone generator. That is the Earth's orgone energy and you can see it move. Okay. Now what happened is our pyramid was designed by Kenneth Killick. Whenever I went to a place like the USPA or Global Sciences, people would come in like Marcel Vogel and Tom Bearden, and they wanted to know what Kenneth was up to. Kenneth was a very, very superior technician, and uh, he developed what we call standing calmer waves, which eventually is known as scalar or soliton energy. We were asked to speak at the Tesla conference. Uh, what Kenneth did in our talk is he talked about the Earth being a motor, and he diagrammed the pyramid as a, a, a shortwave radio device. Tesla turned the pyramid, copied the pyramid, into his wireless patent tower that he put up in New York. And this is the tower that he put up in New York. You see here, he's got a diagram of people pulling the energy off of the tower and the lady sitting on a rock pulling the energy down. 
Tesla also developed the dam system. He wanted to give us inexpensive energy. So this is my pyramid. Welcome to the Hardy's Pyramid. This was designed by Kenneth Killick, who also gave us the light emitting diode and understood standing columnar wave energy. These pyramids all over the world are antennas. They go, they are an antenna into the ionosphere and come down to the planetary grid all the way to the center of the earth. In the time of Atlantis, there was a pyramid over the North Pole and over the South Pole and many little pyramids all around. And as these pyramids pulled down the energy from the ionosphere into these capacitors, they generated the energy out through the grid. And if you look at the Egyptian temples, you look at the houses, they had crystalline floors. And that is how they received the energy. And it really heated their homes and gave them lights. In Alexandria, there was a beam of light at the lighthouse that went all the way up to the sky. So they had this electrical technology. Now what has happened to it is it's been advanced, but there was a man named Nikola Tesla who wanted to bring us this information. And if you look at his New York Tower, it is designed just like the Great Pyramid. It pulled the energy down from the ionosphere and he went out to Colorado Springs and could stick a light bulb in the earth and it would light up because he was using the grid to light these lights. Tesla had this knowledge and he wanted to give it to humanity, but the bankers and the money people that had the money said, we don't want Tesla to do this because anybody can milk our cow. Way, they had to have a way to control it. If you could just stick an antenna into the ground and light your house from that, there was no way to finance it. So that is why we do not have this technology today. But these pyramids are, are antennas. They've always been antennas and they operate as an antenna and they can work through many other forms of antennas. You have many kinds, medicine wheels, labyrinths, these are all kinds of vortex generators. And the biggest one is the crop circle. As again, I am showing you the first crop circle. It is definitely a heart connected to the earth motor. It looks like a pendulum. And so this is really a gift. What people are reporting in the news since the coronavirus, it seems the pollution around the world is beginning to heal itself. The hole over the south pole of the ozone layer is beginning to heal. The smog over the cities in India and China are improving. What has happened is so many people are connecting to the center of the earth through prayer that they've turned the on switch on, the switch on the earth motor, and they're creating a pull from the earth motor to actually start cleaning up. We can create these pillars of light through the Holy Grail vortex, through standing in the middle of a labyrinth and creating a pillar of light and asking the earth to turn on its on switch to purify the atmosphere. The earth's motor purifies the atmosphere and planet's waters. Pyramids and crops are well of the energy of Mother Earth. What is orgone energy and why is it outlawed? The trees communicate through their roots and balance the grid lines of Mother Earth. We can do all of these as dowsers. All we have to do is just visualize the Earth's motor being turned on and see the pillars of light come up through our antennas. Recently, scientists have found startling new evidence about the Great Pyramid of Giza, and they have published a white paper titled Electromagnetic Properties of the Great Pyramid First Multipole Resonances. The conclusion reported in the July 2018 issue of the Journal of Applied Physics reports 
The multipole analysis of the electromagnetic waves scattering by the Great Pyramid has been performed in the radio frequency range and revealed important physical properties concerning the accumulation and focusing of electromagnetic energy. This energy concentration indicates that the Great Pyramid functions as an antenna for the Earth's energy to facilitate its life-sustaining motor. All motors need to be stabilized, and the Great Pyramid generates an energy field to entrain the Earth's motor to continue to run smoothly. As far back as Plato's stories about Atlantis, the Earth has many power stations. Modern evidence confirms that Africa, India, South America, Antarctica, and Australia were once a single continent called Pangaea. At that time, the North Pole was located in the modern Bermuda Triangle region, and the South Pole was near Australia in the Devil's Sea. The main controlling power station was located at the North Pole. The standing wave over the North Pole became unbalanced, collapsed, and cracked the Earth, creating the Atlantic Ocean. Since the Earth is a motor that must operate in a balanced field, this imbalance meant that the Earth would wobble on its axis and the energy it was producing would cease to exist. This would cause the beautiful blue-green orgone energy field produced by the Earth's motor to collapse and the planet would die. An ancient order of interstellar priests came to the rescue of the Earth. First they built a school called Saqqara to instruct the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptian students were trained on the nature of orgone energy, the science of levitation, how to construct pyramids, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Rods of Ptah. By locating the central point of the Pangaea continental landmass, which was Egypt, they built an antenna system using the Great Pyramid. This system was designed to balance the Earth. They also built Stonehenge to act as a control panel for this antenna system. Stonehenge, a vortex generator, monitors and maintains the tip and tilt of the Earth. With this knowledge, the Earth's magnetic field was brought into harmonious balance. When Mary Hardy first entered the Great Pyramid in 1981, she relived a past life in that past time and realized the process of how the Great Pyramid stabilizes the Earth. She saw the agents use a coil, much like a Tesla coil, which they ran up and down the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid. This technique corrected the Earth's imbalance, returning it to a stable orbit. The pyramid itself is built like an orgone generator. It has dual layers of electric, dielectric material acting as an antenna to maintain the Earth's temperature and orbital balance. Mary's teacher, Kenneth Killick, told her that the Great Pyramid's electric, dielectric nature is realized by layering first a wall of stone, then a crystalline chamber of sand, then a wall of stone, and then another chamber of crystalline sand. Unfortunately, the archaeologists that are trying to understand the pyramid have drilled holes into its walls and have removed the sand. Because of the lack of understanding, these scientists do not realize that they are destroying a very beautiful piece of technology that balances the earth. When Mary went to Egypt in 1981, the pyramid's interior was cool, remaining at a constant 72 degrees. Kenneth Killick explained that this was part of the design, maintaining both the pyramid and the Earth's cool temperature. When she returned to the Great Pyramid in 1992, the interior temperature of the pyramid was warmer than the desert air outside. Mary called Kenneth and related to him the temperature reversal and he again told her about the orgone energy field and said, the damn fools are taking the insulation out and they're making the Earth's antenna a useless piece of equipment. The recent scientific white paper has confirmed that the Great Pyramid is an antenna that acts as a lens and pulls the energy up from the Earth's interior. Unfortunately, some scientists still maintain that the Egyptians were not advanced enough to engineer this electromagnetic field into the pyramid. They say it's just a coincidence. Some archaeologists and physicists can't comprehend the information they have in front of them. They are still calling the pyramids tombs. If they would study and understand the pyramid antenna system and reattach it to the Earth's orgone field, they could engineer the tools that were used to build the pyramids. This information is portrayed in many of the Egyptian hieroglyphs. The controlling energy mechanism for these ancient devices was the Ark of the Covenant. We all know the story of Moses parting the Red Sea. 
when engineers accept that the Ark of the Covenant was a capacitor, and when Moses extended the rod of Ptah on the banks of the Red Sea, he created a soliton that allowed him to part the waters. Mary is convinced that the Egyptians were trained on how to use scalar and soliton energy, and the Great Pyramid generated these fields. Moses, the pharaohs, and the students at Saqqara all knew how to use the rods of Ptah. If we had this information today, it would revolutionize technology. It's a shame that archaeologists, physicists, and mechanical engineers cannot see the simple truth of how the pyramids interact with the Earth. Fortunately, Mary Hardy's Orgone Pyramid preserves the antenna grid to hold the frequency of the heart to protect the Earth. We need to understand that the Earth is a motor. Pyramids and obelisks are antennas, and the tune rods of Ptah can direct and manipulate electromagnetic fields to generate standing waves, or solitons, to move this energy. This understanding would greatly benefit all living things, humanity, and Mother Earth. In the 40s, there was a man named Wilhelm Reich. He studied with Jung and Freud. He was a medical doctor, and he was persecuted out of prison for trying to heal the world with orgone energy. I'm going to show you a couple of his devices. Eighty tons of these were burned in the late 40s, and he was put in jail, and this technology was outlawed. But actually what he was doing with these vortex tubes was pulling the energy up from the earth, clean up the atmosphere, and to clean up the water. All we have to do is use our pendulums and imagine standing in the center of, of an antenna or creating a medicine wheel and pull the energy up to the ionosphere and actually visualize what we need to do. I'm going to show you why we have an orgone pyramid. The sides of our pyramid are layered with aluminum paper, aluminum paper, meaning it is a electric dielectric. And if you look at the side of our pyramid, you can see this is why our pyramid shut down the Bermuda Triangle and activated the pyramids all the way around the world to the point where we had Navy intelligence coming to our house and asking us if we knew what we did. I always thought they were going to criticize us, but basically my son, who was then in the fourth grade and 10 years old, told me that, Mom, I wish you'd stop saying that because they didn't come to criticize you. They came to ask you if you knew what you had done. The stray electricity that was in the oceans that was being generated by the radio station was actually killing the ocean and it prevented it. So we can use this energy just connecting, and that's why I think we had the first crop circle. Now here is an antenna system. The pyramid generates a standing wave. This is what Kenneth calls a standing wave. And again, the Great Lakes and the Bermuda Triangles were shut down by us and that, taking the abnormalities out of the grid, actually allowed us to start the engine and start using standing calmer waves, our pillars of light. Now, we have proof of this because anytime we have a tornado in the area, we can connect our vortex to the center of the earth and take tornadoes down. And we have been experimenting with lessening the power of hurricanes by simply doing the same thing. Dowsing works. I used to come to the dowsers in the late 90s at Danville, and there were people there that had this mine mirror, and they were telling you a mine mirror, when they hooked it up to a dowser, uses all beta, alpha, theta, and delta of the mind. The same is true when you do a vortex prayer. You connect to the earth motor by using all of these layers. That's why dowsers can use the grid the way it is. Her resort showed in a diagram how the dowser's brain wavelengths differ from those of a non-dowser. Dowsing works. Prayer works. Her results showed in a diagram the dowser's brain. 
so you can connect to this and pull this energy up and again here is the different forms of brain waves now my older son mark the minute we put a pair of dowsing rods in him, he was in deep delta which is sleep and you could talk to him the same is true of dowsers that's where our mind goes the first crop circle in june 2013 I was asked by the elders of the planet, I was speaking at the Dowsers, and I changed my whole talk, and I was told to come there. It was necessary for us to change the tip and tilt of the earth. So the first crop circle that appeared on June 2nd, just a few days before the meeting in Lindenville, this is a first crop circle. It shows the tip and tilt of the earth. And again, I taught people how to do this. And we asked that crop circle to be placed over Stonehenge. We took the Great Pyramid and placed it over Stonehenge. Then we did a Holy Grail Vortex. We were in the auditorium at Lindenville College. We must have had over a hundred people and they were all dowsers. And because the dowsers could allow their minds to go into the frequency, connect to the earth motor, we actually were told by the elders of the planet that we changed the tip and tilt of the earth. That was probably around June 8th or 9th. By June 21st, this is the first crop circle. What you see here is a different orbits of the earth around the sun so when i saw this it said to me this crop circle showing me that we actually changed the tip and tilt of the earth i was told that we have 10 years to get this information out to use the earth motor to bring it up through the antenna systems of pyramids and labyrinths and crop circles and using the pendulum to generate this, we actually can clean up the planet. Otherwise, things aren't going to go so well for the planet. And here again is another picture of St. Bernard's. Uh, you see the first phase in the morning, and then at morning you see what happened. Shortly after that, after July 6, you see a balanced circle through the crop circles of the planetary grid of the Earth, Mars, Venus. Now this is very interesting. On July 7th, I saw this crop circle and in the comments, I saw this and I saw this. So what that this crop circle told me, and if you want to get on the crop circle connector, it's a, you can get on it and see these, these crop circles. And they always have comments. But there, that, that crop circle and that crop circle are built into this crop circle. That proved to me that we actually changed the tip and tilt of the earth. And we as dowsers have 10 years to use this information of using the crop circles, putting them over Stonehenge, just visualizing them, doing a little bit of prayer, and standing there and doing your meditation and in visualizing the pillar of light coming up to the ionosphere and asking that the birds be protected, the dolphins be protected, whatever you need to ask that the pollution be freed from the earth and ask the earth motor to start generating a frequency that's going to do that. Okay, vortex energy flow through the grid. Uh, Kenneth knew he must have been a designer in the past life he must have helped design the pyramid he could tune a pyramid and an obelisk together or he could tune a medicine wheel and a pyramid together so he could create a line which we call a soliton going from the two obelisks were created as antennas to send energy from one pyramid to another the flow is known as a soliton the soliton is like a wires uh, on our telephone poles. And this is how energy went all the way around the earth. 
Now, what happened is, when we cracked the earth, the Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Sea Triangle, which was the old South Pole, the Bermuda Triangle was the old North Pole, went 120 degrees. The earth was wobbling. So they went to the center point between these two and put up at a wheel weight or an antenna. Now this is what Kenneth said, this is what saved the planet from slipping out of orbit and allowing the Earth's motor to continue. And the Great Pyramid, like a, a Tesla coil, was pulled up and down the Grand Gallery. Now here's a picture of my son in the Grand Gallery when he was 16 years old. If you look along the sides, you can still see where the spokes of the cart stuck in the ground. And they pulled that up and down the Grand Gallery till they actually engineered the Earth to be in a stable orbit. And no wonder Tesla had Tesla coils because he learned all this technology from the Great Pyramid and they were used to connect to the Earth motor. And of course you had the Ark of the Covenant. Now we also had the rods of Ptah and the jets. And you see, you see these people rubbing the side of this that generates the energy that goes from the center of the earth all the way up to the tune forks on top. All of this is written. So we could take this technology if we understood it and reproduce it. There are different types of pyramids. The pyramid behind us is Catherine. Catherine is a hollow pyramid. And Kenneth told us to go halfway under the center, there's a little dip in the ground, stamp your feet, and that thing rang like a bell. He said, Mary, that pyramid is hollow. To do the engineering that you need to do, you have to have solid pyramids, hollow pyramids, and of course, in Egypt, you have a sound pyramid. So the little pyramid in front was a sound pyramid, a hollow pyramid, and a solid pyramid. And it took all three of those pyramids to manipulate the planet back into a stable orbit. Now the power station in the Great Pyramid is the Queen's Chamber. As you see, the power station, and, and when we went there in 1981, you could see the burn marks where they charred the walls because of the electrical strikes. And again, it's in the shape of a Tesla coil. And that is not an accident. Before they could move the planet back into a stable orbit, they had to put a grid, and that is the grid us dowsers use, around the whole Earth. And they did that by putting up hollow pyramids, medicine wheels, whatever. And you have many different types of pyramids. You have step pyramids. That created the whole grid around the world, a net, and then they took the pole and put the planet back in. In the time of Atlantis, you needed to engineer the grid, and this is how they engineered the earth. Obelisks were created as antennas to send energy from one pyramid to another. The flow between the pyramid is known as a solitron. You create a vortex in your mind, and you can have a friend standing someplace else on a medicine wheel and you could create a solitron between the two. In fact, Kenneth tried to work with the farmers in Michigan and Indiana and Illinois and Wisconsin and Minnesota. He put up many medicine wheels, connected them all together so that they had a whole frequency to be pulled up from the earth to grow better crops. We could do that today. With permission from the elders of the planet, Killick designed a tuned obelisk. A tuned obelisk creates either a positive or negative frequency much like a tuning fork. Pyramids also act like tuning forks. Weather patterns pulse a positive or negative frequency depending on their direction of rotation. Killick placed his obelisk in Sedona and tuned it to Mary Hardy's pyramid in Allegan, Michigan. The Sedona obelisk created a positive clockwise upshoot vortex of energy which formed a line to the Hardy Pyramid. The Hardy Pyramid acted as a tune tank antenna connected to a vortex circuit with the Sedona Obelisk. A tune tank works as a circuit that uses a capacitor and inductor in parallel. It is a resonant circuit which absorbs maximum power at the resonant frequency. 
This kind of harmonic gives it tremendous power to equalize abnormalities and disturbances on the earth. The line created by Killick allowed Mary to use her pyramid in the Sedona obelisk to dissolve the Soviet vortex energy line in the summer of 1980. When we first started with Kenneth in 1980, we put up ob obelisks, medicine wheels, labyrinths all over. Uh, as you see, we can begin to engineer this planet. What I also learned in 1996 is I met with 12 Knights Templar in France. They were going to build the Millennium Dome in England and the Templars actually came to the United States. They had the arcs with them. There's more than one arc. And, they, and the Templars had the technology to manifest new arcs. That's how they resonated their chambers or their cit citadels. And this is in Newport, a tower which was going to connect all the arcs up on the planet. And there is a lot of engineering done, and that has to be rediscovered. Now, as you see, we can engineer the planet with medicine wheels. The Native Americans put one of these medicine wheels, nobody knows who put it there, in a little big, big horn. And they use that to pull the energy out from underneath Yellowstone. And one time I was sitting in my yard and Sitting Bull, I got up to do my morning meditation, was sitting there with ghost dancers. Now ghost dancers were dancing around. A clockwise vortex takes energy up. A counterclockwise vortex brings energy down. So he was sitting there with ghost dancers and I asked him why he was there and he said, I'm here to save the sacred ground of Yellowstone. This was pulling the energy out from under uh, Yellowstone, sending it up in a pillar of light with ghost dancers clockwise, sending it over to our obelisk and pyramid system. And he was sitting there engineering the, the ghost dancers and they were pulling the energy away from Yellowstone to the Great Lakes. You could put up, many, this is a garden medicine wheel. Now, my friend Cindy in Tucson put this medicine wheel up and she's been using it to uh, balance out the coronavirus. You create the vortex, make the pillar of light, go to the center of the earth and ask the frequency now, a lot of people say 5G is causing the blood, red blood cells to stick together. So we have to change that frequency just a little bit so the coronavirus cannot injure mankind. And that's what we've been doing, a group of us. Now, as I said, the cathedrals knew about the rose windows work as a medicine wheel. They generate a clockwise solitron to send energy from one cathedral to another cathedral or the other sacred sites. The whole system of standing waves and solitron has been engineered into many of the buildings, sanctuaries, pyramids all over the world. So the Knights Templar did this in Europe. They came over to the United States to do the same thing. And again, this is Chartres Cathedral. And you see the, the labyrinth the labyrinth has a clocking action known as tachyon fields. And as you walk that, you can generate a tachyon field. So you have this tachyon field. And what Kenneth taught us to say, can I, let me think, yes, I can. And he taught us, who am I, what am I? As I am not, so I am not. But as we are, I am. In the Bible, it says you need 144,000 people using their minds with the earth motor to clear out and of course pendulums and dowsers automatically go to that frequency of mind just by taking a hold of a dowsing rod or a pendulum. Kenneth one day sent us this picture to show that there are tachyons all over the world. Uh, this picture showed that a soliton went down the or a wind shear can act like a moving down the track, took every other car off. So it's like the vortex that was generated by Moses. And as I said, I met the Knights Templar 
at, in a garden in France in 1996. And they gave me the Holy Grail Vortex. The Holy Grail Vortex takes two spinning vortexes and counterclockwise to pull the energy down into the cup. And then it takes two clockwise vortexes to pull the energy up. And you have a pillar of light generating two counterclockwise vortexes and two clockwise vortexes. And yes, we have lessened hurricanes. We have taken down tornadoes. One time we had 150 people at our house. It was raining out. There was a tornado coming right across the lake. We went out and did the Holy Grail Vortex. And the news people, the police said, that disappeared right in front of us. And it disappeared because we connected to the earth motor and it took it down. And of course, the Holy Grail Vortex. The Holy Grail Vortex creates a, a vortex generating system that allows us to control the orgone system of all pyramids around the world. So when you do the Holy Grail Vortex, you connect to all the cathedrals, all the pyramids, all the obelisks around the world. So you can actually change the, the slight frequency in the coronavirus. And it was interesting. The second crop circle that appeared was a coronavirus being eaten up by the white blood cells. So you can create a frequency by simply doing the Holy Grail Vortex to create that. This prayer sets up a standing wave from the ionosphere to the center of the earth. And with all prayers, we can do what prayers need. This is this little village called Riddle Chateau. I was standing in a courtyard there, and that's where I met 12 Knights Templar. That whole city is created as a sword in a cup. You see the pillar by, by the, the library? That creates a pillar of, of light going up, and it comes from a, creating a vortex going counterclockwise down through that pillar, and then putting a clockwise vortex all the way around, around the whole library. This is Mount Bucharest. And this was a center for the Knights Templar because they engineered all the cathedrals through the stained glass windows to come to Mount Bucharest. Now, years ago, there was a movie called Close Encounters of a Third Kind. That movie was actually made about Mount Bucharest. There is a lot of UFO activity. Why was the Holy Grail Vortex given to this? In 2000, at the turn of the millennium, the governments were going to build the Millennium Dome. Now, it was built as an amusement park. They wanted to pull Stonehenge over to the Millennium Dome, and they wanted to cha change the frequency through the whole grid to end free will. That's what their attempt was. And that is why the Knights Templar gave me the Holy Grail Vortex. They put radio stations in all the cathedrals because they needed to send the energy from the Great Pyramid up to the Millennium Dome. And they were going to put a capstone on the Great Pyramid. If you remember that, that was way back in the year 2000. And the Knights Templar came to me and gave me this prayer. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Create a skinny prayer counterclockwise a vortex going from the ionosphere. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. A second counterclockwise vortex. I went into the cathedrals. I went into 15 of them in Europe, in Spain, in England, in France, and did this and put the Knights Templar in there so that when they wanted to transfer the energy from the Great Pyramid, they were going to use the cathedrals and the radio stations to this antenna system. This is not an amusement park. This is an antenna system. And to control the solitrons, they put Ferris wheels up all over the Eye of London, and they could get the solitrons to go where they wanted to. So that was what the Holy Grail Vortex was given to us for. 
As you see, there is Stonehenge. They made it in a, as an angle of Stonehenge. And Stonehenge was designed to control the tip and tilt of the earth. So, and this was designed to control the whole grid system. And they could broadcast anything they wanted to through this grid system. Now, the Millennium Dome and the Eye of the London. Down at the end of Champs Elysees in France, they had a big Ferris wheel. They had these Ferris, they were using the Eiffel Tower. They had these Ferris wheels all over so they could generate the energy into the Millennium Dome. And I think it's just as sinister as the 5G. They put 5G antennas all over. And then they change the frequency so the red blood cells stick together. And that causes lung disease, blood clots, whatever. Okay? And, and we can control that by simply going to the earth motor and taking our little crop circle like the coronavirus, sitting it on top of, of a pillar of light, standing in a labyrinth or a crop circle, and and spin that and ask the white blood cells to set up a frequency to destroy it. We can do that with our dowsing ability. The Hardy Pyramid and the, and the Holy Grail Vortex. In 1996, while the Tempers came to me and asked me to learn the system of vortexes to control the grid from any place on the planet, and it can be from any place. This I call the Holy Grail Vortex. You can sit down and create two counterclockwise vortexes and two clockwise vortexes. When Mary's Pyramid was built, it corrected the abnormalities created by the old North and South Poles after the Earth cracked during a polar shift that destroyed Atlantis and created the Atlantic Ocean. Her pyramid has balanced out the Great Lakes Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle, and the elements within the Earth and its waters. Argon energy and the Holy Grail Vortex Prayer have enabled light workers to restore the Earth's life force and reverse malicious attempts to destroy it. She and the Temple of Saqqara have diverted and weakened man-made storm patterns like the 2017 Florida hurricane, protected against extremely low-frequency wavelengths generated by Sawyer Air Force Base, as well as electromagnetic frequencies from radio stations. Mary, the Temple of Saqqara, and the elders of the planet cannot do this without your help. And I'm going to show you how it works with performing the Holy Grail Vortex. You always ask permission, engage in the frontal lobes, or in your dowsing mode. You have to form a clear intent. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. May light be sent on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose that the masters know and serve. From the center which is called the race of man, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the doors where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Raise your hands up. And so it is. And you always give thanks and move on. This is a powerful tool, but you have to understand that you have to connect to the Earth motor. And you see here, the pyramids that we created does that. Well, by because we put an orgon field on it. Again, this is my family. This was taken a couple years after we built the pyramid. And again, in, in 1968, the Hardys lost four hours of time and were told to build this pyramid. John was only three years old. He was dyslexic. We were told that if he did not build it, he, he could not function in the world. So we built him a pyramid so he could relate to 
his consciousness. And in 1975, we built the pyramid. And in 1975, we took down, uh, we, ch we balanced out the Bermuda Triangle and the Great Lakes Triangle. And that balanced the whole grid. And so from that, we balancing the whole grid, you haven't heard anything of the abnormalities in the Bermuda Triangle or the Great Lakes Triangle. In 2009, we built a second pyramid. John wanted a pyramid, so we built a pyramid on his property. And what we have done is we've created an ascension pyramid. 2009, we built a second pyramid, and uh, Peter Shampoo diagrammed this for us. Our pyramid is at the top, Pyramid 1. Uh, second pyramid is Pyramid 2. The map shows the footprint of the Aetheric Pyramid. It uses the two hardy pyramids along with the lake and the dam to create four elements. But when you take two vortexes, our pyramid, Pyramid 1 at the top, and, and John's pyramid, Pyramid 2 at the bottom, you create two vortexes. The vesica pieces of that vortex creates a line right down the Kalamazoo River. Now it's interesting, in 1904, Tesla came to this area and gave Allegan County a system of dams for inexpensive energy. And this was an area just like any other area, but there are certain areas when Tesla wanted to build his technology, there were certain places where he would put his towers so that the energy was better there. Allegan happened to be one of them. So it was not an accident that we moved to Allegan and we put our pyramids here. Now this line that is created goes right down the Kalamazoo River. And the Kalamazoo means boiling water, which was a spiritual river for the Potawatomi Indians. So there are a lot of Potawatomi sacred sites around here. Now if you look at the, on the left side up there, you see the dam and you look at the airport. So that generates all four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. And John's pyramid is fire. Airport is air, the dam is water. And so we have incorporated, if you extend that line all the way to uh, the Devil's Tower and all the way to the Philadelphia, you have where the Native Americans do their vision quest. You have where the Constitution of the United States was formed. Now, there is no way that, the, that we could have d d engineered this by putting our two pyramids up, but it just happened. This is a uh, crop circle, and I'm going to let us do a meditation. So here we go. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. 
the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. 